Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we start, I would like to draw your attention to what I can offer you as a master coach. I can help you to focus on your why with clarity, uniting your passion with your purpose with a plan to create the life you truly desire. Book a free 20-minute coaching call right now via calendly.com forward slash Amy Rowlandson forward slash call and we can take it from there. Today on Focus on Why, I am joined by David Abbott. David, welcome. Hello there. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your show, Amy. Well, it was instigated by the fact that I saw you speaking on a stage and I thought, oh, David would be a great guest for the show. So here you are. Let's <laughs> let's dive straight That was in. your takeaway from <laughs> From my session on the stage, was it? <laughs> yeah, actually, that was my action. I think there are a few other actions I need to be uh, applying to my business. But seeing as I, I um, just in a, a shift of change in my business, it feels right yeah. for you to come on the show first, and then and then I'll get busy with all the actions I've got. So, David, <laughs> why why don't you just share with the audience what is it you're focusing on at the moment? Right from a from a work point of view um nothing specifically new so uh i do two things um one half of what i do is i'm a portfolio marketing director so that keeps my hand in the game uh because my background was uh, uh marketing so i work with clients who for whatever reason are not yet ready to employ a full-time marketing director but they want that level of input into a business so Typically, I work with them to develop a marketing strategy, execute that strategy, and to build marketing competence within the organization. And, and clients like that I usually work one day a week. So that's one bit. Uh, and that's great. As I say, that, that keeps me in the game. That allows me to apply uh, the things that I, I do in the other half, which is talk about one part of marketing, which is pricing. So I... Principally, I work with Vistage, and if people haven't come across Vistage, they run something called a, a CEO group. Um, I know you're familiar with it, aren't you? And um, so there, I think there's something like about 120 Vistage groups across the UK. They, they meet once a week. They uh, involve business leaders and business owners. And they have a business speaker in the morning, and in the afternoon, they share issues and challenges and support each other. And I'm one of those business speakers. Uh, and there are other organizations like them, but Vistage is uh, one of the larger ones. So I talk to them. Um, I work one-on-one -on -one with clients to help them with their pricing, to find a, a way to both get a higher price and to communicate that price successfully. Uh, I speak at conferences uh, about pricing. And uh, I'm also a marketing tutor um, via an organization, um, helping people, uh, mini MBAs and director development courses. So that's that's all the work side. Uh, in order to keep myself sane, the uh, the fun side is I, I I like to chase small balls around courts and pitches. So I play racquetball and, and hockey. Um, hockey was my midlife crisis. My uh, I, I'd played squash and racquetball all of my life. And then my son, when he was 12, took up hockey. Uh, so every Saturday I was taking him... But, to both the home games and the away games, because we're half half an hour away from uh, the club we played at. And I'd never seen a game of hockey in my life. I grew up in Liverpool, and it's football, red or blue, and nothing else whatsoever. Never even seen a game of rugby in my life until you know I left Liverpool. And, um, and I loved it. Uh, hockey was absolutely fabulous. So from 12 till 18, every Saturday, I'm taking along to all of these games. And then, then he disappears off to university so what are you meant to do so i took it up so that, that was my midlife crisis and um I, and i've got quite involved in, in the hockey club now so i run two of the teams the men's sixes and sevens i run the development teams which is where we bring the juniors through so there are three of those uh, the eights nines and tens 
um, and I organise the umpires. So I'm, I'm one of those stupid people who's never learned to say no to to, to something that needs to. <laughs> So that, that, that's one bit. And the other thing is I, I love um, photography, landscape photography. Um, so I like to go out to beautiful places with my camera and tripod and try and capture the beauty of them. Um, in fact, I've just joined uh, a camera club, a uh, local camera club, which is it's, it's not three or four you know, middle-aged blokes sitting in the pub uh, once a week. There's about 100 plus members. Uh, they're really well organised and they had a uh it was only my second meeting yesterday evening and they had somebody called ian beasley who's bradford born and bred and has documented 40 50 years worth of of, of industry and, and businesses and people around the bradford uh, region and he was doing a, a retrospective at oh, wow just outstanding yeah you know, the the quality of of the photography but the the guy tells a fabulous story what an interesting life he's led you know really the uh, the color um which is ironic given that pretty well all of his work is black and white but the color in all of his stories is just uh, amazing and i was going to say actually when you, you're describing the the way that you were led into the photography to go to these beautiful places and capture yeah. the beauty it is about storytelling and it's about yeah. capturing moments yeah it is and uh, and they're fleeting you know they if there's nobody there to record them that that particular moment will never happen again something like it will uh, but uh, but that particular moment it's it's an opportunity just to capture that one thing and and there is so much beauty in the world um it would be it, it would be marvelous to be able to do nothing else but you know just spend all of my time doing photography and nothing else but you know you have to earn a living as well but uh, yeah it's really do enjoy it. It, it what one of the things i find you know because of things like all the speaking you know, you know, there's the marketing and uh, the hockey there's a lot of stuff in there and so i find my days really busy you know there's always something on the go but when you um when you are trying to capture something uh you know, you know landscape photography often you're waiting for the right the right light or you're waiting for the, the the tide to just reach the right point or you know the right particular wave or whatever it might be so you have to take time uh you, you there's a lot of photography where you do just spot something oh wow that's gorgeous with the camera up, quick photo you've kept it great yeah, absolutely superb but a hell of a lot of it is you know you've got a plan you want to be in the right place you get there you set up and then you wait and uh, it, it, it's my my bit of mindfulness, uh, uh, I guess, in, in life. And there is that being whipped into a frenzy and seeing being busy as a bit of a badge of honour. And so we do need to balance that out with having the, these moments of mindfulness and reflection and, and mm. patience, you know, understanding that it's almost like deferred gratification yeah. in some way. Yeah, it, it it is very weird. Um, I've worked for myself for the last 13 years and I still feel guilty if I'm not sat at a computer doing something. I don't report to anybody, you know. <laughs> it, and and you're, obviously you want to try and make sure that you're um, uh, fulfilling anything that a client is waiting for, you know, so you want to crack on with things like that. But but even even when those basic jobs are done, if I'm not working, I feel guilty, and I have absolutely no idea why. <laughs> well, does it come from the the fear of scarcity and and not feeling that you've done enough just to secure for security and safety reasons? Do you think? I I suspect there's an element of that, and when you do work for yourself, if um, if you go through patches where things are a bit tight and uh, you know, we were chatting a moment ago, you heard me on stage and I told a story about that. When you go through those kind of, of periods, you you do end up very keen to say yes to anybody with a checkbook who, who turns up in front of you. So there is, there's, a, there's an element there, I guess. But there's also, um, I, I, I guess it's a conditioned response. You know, you spend 30 years, whatever, uh, yeah, you know, 30, 30 plus years uh, working for other people in industry. You've got a boss, you know, and you're, you know, you're, you're meant to be achieving a certain amount by a certain time and being, you know, 
and working while you're at work. And, and maybe it's just conditioned. <laughs> you know, it, it's driven into you and it's, it's hard for, for that little devil on your shoulder, you know, to say, are you working hard enough? It's hard to get rid of that. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because that's not how productivity works. We can not be really all. effective in an hour and do mm. as much in that hour as, as somebody could do in a month. But yeah. it doesn't work like that. No, absolutely. And and times when you get that, you know, I've experienced that in my life, where you have know, flow, where the, the, there's a particular thing that you want to work on and you, you, you get rid of the distractions. So you're really focusing on the one thing and, and you can feel yourself kind of lift um to a, almost another state you know it's it's remarkable how your productivity suddenly multiplies not, not just a few percent you know, it just goes up doubles trebles whatever because you, you 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 are in a different mental state and it's great when you achieve that and i want to ask you david because you you were very clear about how you describe the two things in terms of the two things you're doing in your work, but also the two things as work and fun being separated out as as distinctly as they were. Mm. Is it is it as distinct as that? Do you have these two worlds that coincide? I think so. Um, I guess I guess where things overlap are when you work for yourself, you you leave behind you step out of the corporate world you know you leave behind uh, a social network um and people have been experiencing this recently haven't they with covid and work from home um my, my son for example um for a long period he was just doing uh one day a week in the office if that and and, and uh, some you know there'd be a period where week after week he'd, he'd always be working from home and he missed the social interaction he's changed jobs uh, about a year ago where he is now it's two to three days a week uh, in the office and he's loving it because you you need that connection with other human beings and i think one part of um, the the stuff that i'm doing i've i've developed connections like the psa uh we, we i talked about the psa when i was you and i we were at the psa conference um uh, and if people don't know what the psa is the professional speaking association and it's it, it, it's a group of colleagues. They're they're my they're my work friends. We don't meet all the time, you know, but but we meet occasionally. And when we do, we have a really really good time. Uh, the portfolio marketing director. I do that through an organisation called the Marketing Centre, and uh, and it's about it's ninety people like me who work for themselves. They've got a director level background in marketing, you know, and they they're doing exactly what I described. I do, uh, but we meet regularly. And we've got that social interaction. The um, the uh, the tutor, the marketing tutor. You know, that's by another organisation. So uh, I think you, you need that kind of human connection and and something you know, the, the spending time with people and and just just being able to talk to them. Um, and I don't know whether that answered the question or not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just really interesting because I just I just like to see how people sort of departmentalize their their life and, and how yeah. it it is a case of works here funds here or or leisures here and it is it's very different for everyone it's not the same at all and yeah. um, there was there's a quote that i i was listening to brené brown in her book dare to lead and she she was quoting i think it was brian sutton smith and he said that the opposite of play is not work it's depression and it's so hard to play in a world where we attach our, our self-worth to what we produce and it's for me it's it's understanding that it's bringing fun to everything we do it's yeah. bringing that fun element to it, and not separating it as as you as you did when you were describing it but i don't know if that's how you approach life or or whether that's how you've so you were just explaining the sort of work side of of what you do for a profession as separate. Yeah, I I think I think the key word there for me is fun. Uh, you know, in what you were describing there, and um, uh, and that is what I'm trying to ensure that the things that I do are things that I enjoy doing. I had long enough where 
I, I might be working in a particular area or, or working with a particular group of people and I, I wasn't enjoying it. And too much of your waking day is spent out earning money. You, know, you, you want to be doing something that you you enjoy, you find fulfilling, you think you're making a difference. You know, that, that, that's a lot of a lot of what motivates me. Uh, and I think having a, for me, having a portfolio of different things, so the different interests socially and different things from a work point of view, having that mixture keeps it all kind of fresh. Um, means that uh, uh, yeah, it, it makes it easier to get out of bed in the morning and, and, and turn the laptop on and crack on with whatever it is that you need to do. There, there are times... I, th I think that there are times when I, I'll, I'll end up working through the weekend or whatever. It's, it doesn't entirely feel like work, though. It's it, it's not the same as it used to be because I'm because I'm doing it lo principally for myself and my family, and I guess because I'm I'm working on things that I do enjoy because I have some agency in the whole thing. It, it doesn't feel entirely like work. And that and that's the the difference, isn't it? That in terms of you're very clear, and it, even though you're working at weekends, I, I don't feel like you're 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 blurring the the boundaries in in a negative way. That mm. the focus is very clear. You you love doing what you're doing, and you just described it as being fun, fulfilling, and making a difference, which motivates you. Yeah, and is that the purpose piece? I, I've never really stopped and thought about a purpose for myself, um, not in any great depth. I guess that there are a few, there, is, there are a few bits to what I do where uh, there is a purpose there that, that I recognise. The pricing side of thing, for example, I. It might helping companies to charge more might seem like a, 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 a might, might make me the enemy of every consumer out there. <laughs> yeah. Who's who's this guy that's going out there and teaching companies to increase their prices? Oh my god! <clears throat> but the the ethical side of that is the companies that earn a fair return for the value that they deliver. They can invest in their teams. You know, that that creates career opportunities and and growth for for the people within the organisation. It, it it makes their roles secure and safe, so that when there is a downturn, the company doesn't have to immediately shed jobs or or go bust uh, and, and take people's incomes and mortgage payments. Um, so there is an ethical side to the uh, the pricing. I think I've always had a kind of a a general world view, which is that we should leave the world a better place than we find it. And I know that that's a cliche, but uh, in the, those times when you're down the pub with your mates and you're in, into the third pint and you're starting to you're starting to solve all the world's ills, and if if only we were in charge, you know, when you get to those kind of moments, um, that really does fundamentally feel like the the real essence to me, you know, try and leave the world a better place than you found it. And and probably that's why I really enjoy playing hockey. But the reason why I get stuck in and help with various things is it just makes things slightly better. Um, the you know, time and effort that you put into your family, you know, I love my family. And and I know I didn't list them as one of the uh, the four things, uh, but that's because they, they kind of, they run through everything. Uh, I've got a new grandson. He's just over a year old. And, um, and they're fantastic now, you know, compared to when my kids were young. But every every phone is a is a camera and a video camera, you know. So almost every night, you know, the, there's a new photo or video of him doing something, and, and we'll we'll be lying in bed, and before we put the uh, the light out, you will know, we'll notice that there's oh, there's a little uh, alert appeared next to photos, and oh, let's have a quick look and see what Xander's been up to today, and. And you go to get to sleep with a great big smile and you know great big grin on your face, and and I guess that's also part of what really gets you out of bed, isn't it? It's um, uh, it's the it's it's the joy that you get from all of that and being part of uh, family and and helping each other and contributing to each other. And there is this 
this feeling that I'm getting from listening to you, David, of a, a community of family and yeah. and how the the helping contribution that the, you not being able to say no to anybody or or say <laughs> yes to everything and 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 really building up the different teams that you're involved in and and understanding and that that so many people are going to benefit from you running the the teams aside and and also doing the umpiring as you said you were and it's or organizing the umpires as you said mm. you did it's it's having those those people in the world that often go unseen i mean you see all these awards for unseen heroes and and it's true you know that the the volunteering that is done in this world does make it a better place mm. and it 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 is that when you were saying never stop to think about purpose for yourself well i think purpose is is exactly what you're doing in terms of you all the all the pieces of the jigsaw that you're putting into place then unlock for others opportunities so mm -hmm. there will be young children who go on to play for england for example maybe a handful maybe one just one but it's because they had those games organized by you at some point you know that you showed up in that moment or and, and it might not even be that it might be that that was their only joy in their life they might have been having a hard time and but the hockey was their one solid thing and you may not even know the things that you've done as a result for showing up i i, I think you're right I, I, yeah I, I wouldn't claim sole responsibility for any hockey player that goes on to play for england no not not if they model their game on mine given how recently i came to the uh the sport <laughs> but uh yeah yes yeah and then there are a, a small number of people, I guess, who put a lot into uh, a club or whatever it might be. There's usually a small number of people, and and everybody then gets something from it. And uh, and 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 often, often people might not even really know or that, that somebody else has has done something there that that made a difference. And uh, when I was, I was talking at the PSA um the uh without going into the the, the whole story you know the back in 2016 um I, I was at the that year's conference uh and two people on the stage um said something that i took to heart and acted on and it, it literally changed my life now in 2023 i went back and I, I i explained what a difference that had made that's probably the first time those two people realized that seven years ago is it seven? Yeah, my maths was right. That uh, seven years ago, they did something and they they fundamentally changed somebody's life. So you don't always know that that's happening, but but we need but we need the people to get their finger out and get stuck in, or tell their stories, or do or whatever it might be. Because you might you might never you know never hear about the outcome, but the out the outcome is there. You know, and you've got to get out there and do those things. You do. And your shift in perspective of becoming a grandparent changes your worldview. You were talking about mm. having a general worldview. And sometimes we hone right into the, the very immediate worldview that what is my my world? Well, it's my my grandson, my my, my immediate family. But then yeah. it ripples out to, OK, well, then there's a community, then there's the, the sort of the nation and then there's the globe. And and it does make a difference if we sort of come out and then go back in so we we do get specific about what i can what changes i can affect mm. but then also knowing that as you were speaking about the ethical side of the work you do in business with your pricing you know you're helping helping companies to change to charge more and yes that then allows people to excel in their roles because they're able yeah. to because they haven't got that 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 worry of their security and they they've got a a more stable foundation to work from. So what do they go on to do? And it, and it yeah. is, it is a huge thing. So this is where sometimes I, I I don't think people stop and reflect on the impact they're making unseen or seen or in their roles in their, in their different, and whether that be a volunteer role or whether that be a paid role, it doesn't make any difference, but often the, the, those moments have huge positive global ripple effects. Yeah, I I agree. Um, 
and it's uh, I, and you've got to take a lot on faith, haven't you? That uh, the, the the things that you do will will make a difference, but you might never ever find out what that difference was. Um, but if uh, if enough of us um, do all those little things, yeah, and I, I'm not trying. I don't want to build it. I run a few hockey teams, yeah, <laughs> it, but. But it does. Uh, but I know it means that there, there are um, there are thirty three kids plus subs um, uh, each week that are playing a game that they love that they wouldn't otherwise have played, and, and that helps to develop their skills and you know get them into the senior sides. And the faster than the senior sides, the faster they improve. And you know, and it, it, it all makes a little bit of a difference. But lots of little differences add up, don't they? Um, you and I heard um, Steve Head talking about uh, the the wheelchair rugby team, and uh, and and they adopted the "Will it make the boat go faster?" Yeah, <laughs> they're not in the boat, but nevertheless, yeah, it, it's a great philosophy because because it's it's all about those little those little differences that we make, but little differences add up to a big difference in the end. They really do, and I, I love the "Will it make the boat go faster." Yeah metaphor that it represents and it's a great book by ben hunt davis and harriet beverage i think mm. she gets forgotten a lot everyone always remembers that ben hunt davis but they forget that it was a co-written book oh <laughs> don't get my don't get my daughter started on all that <laughs> she's absolutely right you know the um the the uh, i love science absolutely love science and there's a particular podcast called uh, the skeptic's guide to the universe and um they had a series at one point where it was the forgotten heroes of science and every single damn week, it was a, a an incredibly brilliant female scientist, but the but the male department head gets the recognition, and they yeah, yeah, terrible. Yeah, you're right, and and it is a great philosophy, and it can be applied to to everything. You know, decision making every day. You know, is this going to help me get closer to my goal? Is yeah. essentially the the metaphor there and i'm a rower i i, I got to national level but it's, wow. it's a, so i i understand the metaphor i understand like it the, the simple stripping away of everything else to help focus and we're here we are talking about focus on why and for mm. me it is about the the purpose piece and a lot of people worry or or feel nervous about purpose they don't understand what purpose is but and you shared that you hadn't stopped to think about purpose for yourself, but actually there's a thread, you know, that, that runs through all of our lives, whether we're mm. aware of it or not, of, of intention and intention to what is it that I'm trying to achieve. And often the purpose will, will sit there at the heart. It's in the heart of your values. It's in the heart yeah. of what you're trying to achieve. And it, for, for, for me hearing here, you know, it's capturing and treasuring moments and you you started off talking about your landscape photography but now it's capturing moments also from portraits you know for your for your grandson it's, it is, it's yes. still capturing moments it is is yeah. what's is happening yeah I, I think one of the nice things just thinking about it, you know if if you can clarify purpose and goals i guess you know those two things together they they not only help you to decide what you should be doing, but exactly as in the the metaphor, will they make the go the boat go faster? Um, I almost said the goat. <laughs> will it? How fast? How Greatest fast of all the time, goat absolutely. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Look at that goat. Um, uh, the part of the uh, the point about the uh, will it make the boat go faster is the things that you don't do uh, as well, which creates the time to focus on whatever your purpose and your goal might be. Yeah, there are some questions in the book. The there's some clear questions about we and I'm just trying to remember. I've I've actually written a blog on this, but I, I'll pick it up in my reflections with actions episode separately. To to it's not just as you just say, what is it you're going to do, but it's also what are you going to stop doing and, and yeah. what are the risks? It's all around risks that you're taking. Mm. Um and it's really interesting uh, that that whole philosophy that that they go into. Uh, so Tell me more about the the joy side of things. So you were talking about the fun, fulfilling, making a difference motivates you, but you were also talking about the joy of all the things that you do, of helping people to realize their 
their dreams, their purpose, their their aims. Oh, you you really you put me on the spot there because I I, I know I do all the things uh, and I recognise that anything that you do do where you're you're helping to make something happen, then then that creates a benefit for somebody else. I very seldom stop and think of it in those terms, though. <laughs> So I, I don't know. I, I, I struggle to answer that one. It's um, I've never really, really stopped and thought it through. It's funny because maybe it helps you to reflect when you when you were talking about the beauty of the photography of Ian Beasley's work, and you were yeah. saying how there was so much color yet it was in black and white, and. And for me, that tells you were saying it was a t tells a fabulous story. The work he's done, the photographs he's taken, and often if you can't describe it in words, you can describe it in images or in yeah. in sort of feelings in 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 well in in ways of being. You know, it's not always, and that's what happens with the purpose pieces. Often you can't describe it, you can't put words on it. It, it just feels in the body some way. Yeah, I I think that's right. And... Uh, I, I've, I've always been tremendously impressed by people who had real clarity in terms of um, uh, both their purpose or uh, and or because uh, they're not necessarily the same, but their life's goals. And I've never really had that. I've kind of drifted along with a vague kind of direction I wanted to go. And I guess, I guess the the, the cliche that I used earlier, you know, about leaving the world a better place than you find it has been a kind of an underlying principle for me. You know, what wanting to, you know, if somebody, if somebody says, hey, we need some, I need some help, if I can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll help. Um, if, if a volunteer is needed to run some hockey teams, I'll help run some hockey teams. I, I am jealous of people who have that real, real driving passion for a particular thing. And I think... I think I've I've just kind of drifted along, just just wanting to do the best I can, and uh, and that sounds very wishy washy, doesn't it? No. I tell you one thing that did uh, become evident for me, and this goes back probably twenty years. Nigel Risner, who is another person that that we both know in the Professional Speaking Association, was talking at a uh, a, a business meeting where I was present. And and he asked some challenging questions, and I can never remember the precise wording, but 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 he asked something like uh, uh, to write down what's important to you, or, or well, what is it that you really want, you know. So I wrote some things down, uh, and then he said, right, okay, draw a line through all of those things, and now what is it that you really, you really genuinely want? And and the first the first answer that had been the trite things, oh, you know, I want a promotion, I want to do this, or I want whatever. But then, but then, when he really forced us to to start take a step back, it, and I thought about it, it was actually I wasn't spending enough time with the family, but because work was taking over my life uh, too much. I work a lot now, but I'm working at home. I, I'm spent. I'm I have much more contact and time with my wife, and we both love it. The, the this rather than me having an hour's drive to work, a full day, an hour's drive back, I arrive, you know, we eat, go to bed and repeat in the morning and, uh, you know, the next day. So um, uh, the family was one part, but also friends. And I I'd, I'd kind of, I I'd play in the sport, but I wasn't really, I wasn't spending time with friends. You know, I'd never go out just for a pint. Um, and he's being reminded about some of the important things in life because 50 years from now, uh, I'll be gone. And I doubt if there's many people who are going to be sitting around looking at a particular piece of work or have you seen this memo? We had this memo framed, you know, the, the David, have you not heard of David Abbott? You know, he's, yeah, there'll be none of that, but my grandson will remember me, you know, and the, and, 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 and it's that kind of thing that I, I think perhaps we need to, to just reflect on at times, or I did, I needed to anyway. And it was, Again, it was Nigel. You see, I'm not that clever. I, I need all these other people to keep saying things to me for the light bulb to go off. And I thought, oh, yes, family and friends. I forgot about them. So, <laughs> Don't give yourself a hard time. It, honestly, it's so easy to, to get whipped into a, a way of working 
And you said you drifted along in sort of in a vague direction, but actually I think that there is intention because you have shifted in in how you can now be intentional spending time with yeah. your friends and family and and love and friendship is what really matters. You know, it really is. It comes down to that. And and I, it, sometimes it takes the death of a very close friend to, for that reminder. Sometimes it takes a, a motivational speaker to to ask you and challenge you and ask those questions. But it is about you. You saying leave the world in a better place. And without being too specific, is there something that you would like to? do that will leave the world in a better place for you i that's a really really deep question <laughs> i think there are two levels to to that on the trivial level um i i just think that if every single one of us tried to do that then it's going to happen anyway you know the the, the boat faster stuff you know lots of small increments and and it could be a smaller thing as the hockey team. So yeah, there's there's a friend, there's a friend who has, has been shortlisted for an award, and um, was struggling to think about well, what do I do about that? How you know, how do I communicate that to be able to do more of what I uh, what she was um, nominated for and. Um, so I spent a morning with her just talking about how, how we, she might promote that and, and, and raise awareness. And, and uh, so it's a couple of hours of, uh, of my time, but hopefully it's made a difference to her. Uh, you know, so on the, the trivial end, I think if we all did that, if we're all prepared to just get stuck in and do the odd thing or whatever it is, then it, then it, the whole, then it adds up to a better place for everybody. I think the, the bigger picture, um and i i don't have the time or the guts or the money i think but there are some really big challenges in the world um not everybody who's listening to this will necessarily agree but climate change and things like that and i think if um if my numbers came up on the lottery uh, and i i i won more than a life changing amount of money then i think that one of the things that i would like to do for the the, the closing years of my life, perhaps, is uh, stop on the general work, you know, uh, you know, going out and earning the money, but then put a chunk of time into w one of the issues that, that uh, as a human race, we really need to get our fingers out and do something about. Uh, and there's more than one of them. Uh, and it, uh, again, it, <laughs> this is this is this is one of those pub conversations, you know, <laughs> what if? But. Um, uh, I don't know whether I have the guts to do that or not. And, and yeah. I'm tremendously impressed by the people who do. And, and you know, we we hear their names in the news all the time, but but they are they are incredible role models. And again, whether you agree or disagree with each of the individual causes, there are people who think there are, there's something important enough that they will basically give up uh, everything else in their life to and dedicate it to. And and not just the not just the Greta Thunberg and climate change kind of thing, you know. But um, what's his name? Navalny over in uh, Russia, who cares cares enough about democracy and freedom in Russia that, that he he's been poisoned. He you know they've, they've tried to kill him twice. He flies back. They arrest him, and and they, and he'll spend the rest of his life in jail on trumped up charges. But but I, I can't imagine that that level of sacrifice. That that's just amazing. Thank God there are some people for whom. The future is that important, you know, that they care that much, that they're prepared to do that. And uh, I, yeah, I think they, they, they need all the support that we can give them, all of them. Yeah. And, and it, you really reminded me of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, of which there yeah. are 17. <laughs> and, and it does help you to focus. Part of one of the myths of purpose is that people believe you need to have this huge cause and you know one of those would would meet it like zero hunger or zero or no poverty or um quality education whatever it may be it could mm. be climate action i think that just having a step towards any of those as yeah. as as it doesn't have to be that you are embracing it 
entirely that it is like an all or nothing you know you're 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 gluing yourself to the roads but it is a case of if we all did something yeah. and and in a small way and I, it yeah. is right it, that you were sh- sharing that the small increments add up of course they do the compounding effect is huge when we all make a difference and there's a there's a fabulous quote from margaret mead which is all about the that if we all believe that we can do something anything a small amount we can change the world uh, and that yeah. I've, I've butchered the actual thing i'm i think it's, it's something about never doubting that a small group of of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world indeed it's the only thing that ever has and and i think yeah. with that shift in thinking in that shift in 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 knowing that we can make a difference and it it doesn't have to take time guts or money or an inordinate amount of of any of those it is possible and and even just shifting that thinking makes a massive difference so i, I know where you're coming from david i get it mm. but i also in the same breath feel that it can be defeatist if we if we think that way yeah that, that um because we can't change everything then, yeah. then we won't bother changing anything yeah um, and i i'm 100 with you and i think it is a a uh it, it it's almost a logical fallacy that um uh that you you would only do something if you can get 100 percent success so what one percent success is one percent more than you had before you know uh, every 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 little thing that we do whether, whether it's about our personal goals our personal um purpose or, or or we're talking about this bigger picture um everything moves us in the right direction and it, it also reminds me of uh, david brailsford or sir david brailsford yes. the the cycling yeah. coach with his one yeah. percent theory 1%. right yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. It, it, which is almost identical to the whether make the go, don't go faster kind of philosophy isn't it and yeah uh and i, I think it's it, it's a good philosophy for us individually um as we were saying earlier about helping with focus and making sure that we're doing the right things and continuously going in the right direction but it'd be a great philosophy for uh, our flipping leaders <laughs> if we could persuade them to think that way <laughs> right before we go down the whole uh, political <laughs> rabbit hole <laughs> um, yeah. david thank you for sharing why you do what you do and and why you are who you are and where you're going with the rest of your your intentional living it's, it's fabulous and thank you so much for sharing it it really is a it's been a lovely conversation so thank you how well, are people... i thoroughly enjoyed it I, I don't know that we've concluded anything and i doubt if i've helped anybody but uh, <laughs> but it well, has been it... I've, I've really enjoyed chatting to you thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you it's <laughs> funny you say that because actually remember what you said earlier that seven years ago two people made a difference to you just by listening to something I, you, you know you... actually that's true <laughs> so there we go yeah. um, so thank you how would people reach out and connect with you I think the two easiest ways are on LinkedIn. So David Abbott and um, uh, there, there are a few David Abbott on LinkedIn, but if you uh, say for David Abbott speaker or David Abbott platypus, uh, because my pricing topic is called how to price your platypus. So uh, things like that would uh, help you to find me. The same thing, uh, I've got a website. So, uh, and rather than give the URL, if you just search for David Abbott speaker platypus, then that website is going to come up. So you Perfect. can find me uh, find me at either of those. Uh, I I'm on I'm on Twitter as well. I'm not going to call it X. Uh, I'm on Twitter as well, but I tweet very infrequently. So it's a bit pointless tracking me down there or Facebook. Same thing. So <laughs> all right, LinkedIn it is perfect. Yeah, so, link, oh, LinkedIn website. website. Yeah, yeah perfect. reach out to me. Well, both those links are in the show notes, so no problem. <laughs> David, thank you again for sharing your your why have you got some final words for the listener please i i guess my final words would be don't if you haven't got an absolute clear purpose uh that, that is really driving you don't don't stress about it uh i think that lots of there, there are some amazing people who do and i admire them lots of us don't uh and our purpose might be a number of smaller purposes or or our purpose might become more evident as we go along. 
but but if if your purpose isn't clear to you right now it, don't worry about it it will emerge later you know you're, you're absolutely fine How has this conversation had an impact on you? What value have you received from tuning in? What are your reflections with actions? Please take a moment to leave me an Apple podcast or Spotify review sharing how Focus on Why has made a difference to you today. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, simply connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.